ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. This is a 10 p.m. lecture. I didn't want to do it at 9 p.m. I announced it at 9 p.m. I was like, what the fuck am I doing? I want to just relax and not do a fucking lecture. That's for sure. And then at 9.59, as I was logging on, I was like, holy shit. I personally don't want to fucking listen to myself. And I know how fascinating I am. Who the fuck is going to come and listen to me at 10 p.m.? Well, thank you for coming. So now I'm making it worth your time. If you're joining on Instagram, yes, keep clicking the link in the bio. Keep arriving here. If you're here, you have video, click it on, okay? All right, we're about to get started in 4, 3, 2, 1. Welcome. This is going to be a public lecture. I'm AZD, Arise the Power Motherfucking D Bazaar. First and foremost, I'm an entertainer. Nothing I say, take seriously. Everything's entertainment. Number two, uh, make sure that if you're an adult, if you're watching me, okay, I'm only speaking to adults, no children in this. And also, uh, don't break the laws of the land that you're in. Whichever land you're tuning in from, keep those laws. Also, a very special shout out to my brother, Sammy of San Jose, the Red Dragon. Shout out to you, my brother. Okay, everybody welcome on this Sunday night at 10 p.m. here. God knows what time it is where you're tuning in from. And what are we going to talk about? What's up, everybody? Come over here. Come to Zoom. There you go. I figured when I was thinking, I don't want to lecture. Then I thought, okay, I should go pee. So I went to go pee at that moment. Why? Because a lot of magical things happened for me the moment I shut the bathroom door. God knows where it comes from. But inspiration galore pours into my fucking soul when I go into the bathroom. It's one of my favorite places in the world. As I shut the bathroom door and I began to urinate, which is a nice word, just pee, I realized that what I need to do is talk about something that I really feel like talking about. Then I can talk all night about it, right? I just didn't feel like talking anymore tonight. So then I thought, what do I want to talk about? So now we're going to talk about what I want to talk about and you're going to benefit. It's really good, okay? Let's get started. A long time ago, there was a tradition of people that were very good storytellers. They told stories. Do you like a good story? Uh, once upon a time, in a land far, far away, in a place not much dissimilar to a place where we are right now, there lived a young man or a young woman. <laughs> Depends on if you're a man or a woman. This is Choose Your Own Adventure. Salute, brother. Welcome, sir. There lived a young man or a young woman. Get up. And this young man or young woman found themselves in a strange land, lost with a bunch of strangers who all seemed to be lost also. This was the land of the lost. Have you heard the land of the lost? This was the land of the lost. Every single person was lost in it. Now I want you to create a society where everybody's lost. Well, there was a TV show called Lost a long time ago. It was a good show, by the way. Think about arriving in an island where everybody's lost and you're lost too, and the luggage they give you is always lacking. You never have enough for your life. Start there. And the moment you arrive, they start filling your head and bombarding it with these ideas. You don't have enough, you need more. You see the luggage in your hand? If you had a bigger luggage, you would actually make it in this land of the lost. And now, do you see what you're transporting yourself in? If you had this other transportation, you would make it in the land of the lost. And there was like billboards, and there was like music videos about it. There was people running in the streets shouting. And every once in a while, they would put one of these people up who had one of these things, and then make him look like a freaking god. Big, you would drive through these streets of Los Angeles, and you look up at a building. That's not a building. That's Beyonce on a building. Well, you know what? I'm going to tell you something about the human mind. The human mind has a, has a, a size um, thing in it, a size uh, measurement inside of it, meaning whatever is most important to you and whatever affects you the most in your mind holds big, big, big picture space. And whatever doesn't matter to you has small space, small pictures, okay? So when you go and you see any of these celebrities and their pictures are so big, in fact, beforehand, you go and you watch them in the theater and you got this giant face of Jessica Alba or somebody, right? And you're looking at her and her face is the size of her car, literally, right? When you're in the theater. And what happens is it's psychologically, it's a trick. And what it does is these people, we walk away and we literally carry giant pictures of them in our mind. Because yes, that's right. If you saw the same movie in a small microscope lens, 
it would not have the same effect. Imagine the same exact movie that's in the IMAX. Now look, the bigger the movie, the stronger the effect on your mind. The smaller the picture, the smaller the effect on your mind. Thus, we get bigger and bigger TV screens. Why? Because they affect our mind more and more because they're literally big pictures. And our mind is made up of pictures. Another word for pictures, I mean, another word for the mind is pictures, by the way. Okay? Technically. If I said, handle your pictures, I could be saying, handle your mind. Same thing. Okay? And if I said, that's just your pictures attacking you, I could also be saying, that's your mind attacking you. That's not you. Okay? All right. So our celebrities are putting these big, big TV screens. Then what happens? Every time they show up to perform, there's lights, fireworks, music, lights go down. Everyone stands up like, ladies and gentlemen, and now, Beyonce and Jay-Z. Let, let me hear you out there, yeah! Yeah! Let me hear you out there, yeah! Yeah! All right, I know homeless people that are better performers than some of those people. I've seen them. Now, what's the deal? Well, the, it's a created celebrity. It's a created image. And today's celebrity is a created celebrity. It's very different. We know the age of somebody who was extremely talented and they made it because they were extremely talented is no longer the case. Now it's the age of who can attract the most attention. If you can attract a lot of attention and your guitar, let, okay, let me give an example. This is the age where you could, your, your YouTube video can go viral if you suck at singing on American Idol. <laughs> Right? And your name could be William Hong, and you could fucking become a world celebrity. It was, it was the first or second season of, uh, of uh, American Idol. I know, you weren't even born probably. <laughs> Do you guys remember William Hong? She bang, she bang. Oh, she moved, she moved. And then Simon, you guys gotta look up, listen, you guys gotta look up on YouTube. William Hong audition, right? It's it, look, I realize I'm old now. See, I know because one of my girlfriends is, is like two generations under me, so she's like, What? William Hong? What the fuck is that? That shit was viral. What's up? Shout out to Tattoos by Sin. Thanks for coming by. She tattooed uh, Electra and also my sister. Okay, look up Tattoo by, Tattoos by Sin, C I N, okay? If you want a female tattoo artist in the Bay Area. Okay, so William Hong does this shit. Simon, who's like the mean, uh, the mean uh, judge, is like, what the hell was that? And, and, and William Hong, which I show you the video, is a buck tooth oriental who's super skinny and he's got a hair color where you, where you comb it like this. And his eyes are really big and he's dressed wrong. He's got this weird button shirt, which is like a uh, polo shirt, but it's like this awkward turquoise color with these like lines of pink and white in it. I mean, it's just like he's, he looks like a movie. And he's like standing there like this as he's listening to him. And then Simon's like, what? Like, what the hell was that? And this guy's like, he goes, he goes, uh, I, I have no, uh, no professional singing. Uh, I, have, I, have no, I have no professional singing uh, 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 lessons or something like that. And Simon's like, oh, you're kidding me. I remember he threw his fucking, he goes, no, really? And then the guy goes, yes, but I did my best and I have no regrets about it or something like that, right? And then the other judge, the girl goes, oh, oh, well, see, now that's good, Simon Bina. And he was like, yes. So this video goes viral. He gets produced, a song gets produced. Yeah, but listen, this is the time where all you have to do is just grab attention. The dude went on American Idol, was the worst audition, one of the worst auditions that ever was, yeah. and I'm still talking about him. Okay? He's more, fa I can't tell you who won season two, but I can tell you William Hong lost, and he was fucking great. <laughs> and he made a song, and he got produced. And he became more famous than everybody except was Kelly Clarkson. The only American Idol person I know is Kelly Clarkson. Okay? The fuck, they still have that show? Okay. So now we're at an age where all you gotta do is just grab some attention from people. Now let me ask you something. You wanna be successful? I assume you want to be successful at what you do. Today, how much attention did you grab? Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Here we go. From the people that already know you and new people who don't know you. 
did anybody get to know about you today who didn't know about you yesterday? I'm curious. Because if you have a business and you didn't do that, I'm, I, you know the image I got is banging my head against this fucking uh, table as hard as I can. That's how I feel about it. You're telling me your well-being depends on your production as a business person. And today, nobody, nobody knew, found out about you, and you existed. Are you telling me you weren't even driving this new car? Because if the night was ending and nobody knows about you, you honk that fucking car and everyone rolls down the windows and you go, and they roll down the windows, look, look, and look, you go, arrivesapar.com. You got to go check it out. Arrivesapar, zpr.com. Yeah, it's up there. Arrivesapar.com. I swear, I saw it. And then go, at least do that. As crazy as that shit sounds, you go to bed having done some shit for yourself that improves your fucking condition. Now that was the most extreme case. So it doesn't have to be like that, but I'm just telling you if everything is lost, you do that. How do I know that? Because when I would go to pick up girls at a time when that was my thing to do, if by the end of the night I hadn't talked to a certain amount of girls, then, then nobody was safe at that moment. Okay. If a guy looked like a girl, I'd go fucking talk to him. I mean, it didn't fucking matter. Why? Because I was not going to fucking go home and have the, the, the failure of my own effort. That's the part I never understood. That part counts on you. You wanted to talk to 10 girls or something or 10 new customers or you just decided today 10 new people will know about what I do. And then they, they ended and you didn't reach out to 10 people. Like however way you justify that, you're an idiot. If you can't even get done what's under your own effort, how in the fucking world should, should or would or could anybody listen to you? You are not going to influence a fucking ant to walk the other way if you put your foot down. The yeah. ant will respect you. The ant will walk right over your fucking foot and turn back and spit on your shoe <laughs> and walk away and tell you, hey, don't put that foot down next time you saw me walk. And you probably at that moment be like, well, you know, I wasn't, I don't normally put my foot down. It's just your hand, but oh, okay. All right. You might as well. Be why You failed your own efforts. Okay. We need to really examine this. How does one fail their own effort? Meaning what? I'm going to get up tomorrow at 11 a.m. At 11.05, I'm in bed. I'm hitting snooze. At 11.30, I'm in bed thinking something else. You said 11 a.m. Yeah, but no one's watching. God's watching, you dumbass. The only person worth watching is watching. Who's that? You. You're the one that judges you. You can't lie to you. You cannot lie to you. After a while, everything you say is just pure bullshit to yourself. Everything. It's like you become that person that says it and maybe doesn't, maybe doesn't do it. Okay? I'm that person that says it and gets it done. That's it. I will get the job done. How or why? Why not? Look, um, I don't know. I can explain a thousand ways, but I don't think it's necessary. You just need to know that I'll get the job done. And I'm looking for people that'll get the job done. Okay? We need people that can deliver a message to Garcia. Now, if you know what that means, fantastic. If you don't know what that means, listen again. We need a people that can deliver a message to Garcia. Decode that for yourself. I'm going to start talking in codes to you guys. I drink a lot of water these days and I eat very little food. So according to my estimation, if I keep eating and drinking like this, a few months from now, I should look a lot thinner, skinnier, and uh, just maybe Indian or something because I'm also tanning all fucking day. So that's going to be great. Okay. My name is going to go from Araj to Raja. Okay. <laughs> Raja Rajit Rashish is my name, my Indian name. Or my Indian name is Black Hawk, who saw White Owl. <laughs> That's the other kind of Indian, right? Okay. You see, if you're, if you're a girl and you send me like these laughing faces, you have a crush on me. Let's just admit it. <laughs> it takes a lot of effort to do that as a girl, like publicly. Like, what are you really saying if you publicly take the fucking moment to send me like laughing, crying faces when I'm talking? That's a lot of interest. So like... Just get that that's a lot of interest you're showing. Now, I love that shit. But then from there, you can't go back five levels of interest 
and think that you already didn't exert that much interest. You did publicly tell me what you felt. Okay? So good job. Now send me a message privately. Okay? What books would you recommend for everyone to read? Any book that gets you excited to pick it up and read it. Would you like to see my book list here? You read still what books are here? I did it last night and I thought it was so cool. <laughs> Didn't I feel cool? Did you see me? Um, you didn't see me do this yesterday? No. Really? What were you? I don't know. Did I lecture when you were with the girls? Did I do something like that? Oh, yeah. yeah did. So maybe I did, I did this. Look how cool this is. Everybody ready? If you missed it yesterday, this is just on the table here. This is not a library. This is my table. Okay, so what have I been recently reading, if you want to know? Okay, here we go. This is like a little comic called The Damned, but it's The Joker in it. Will Wilder, The Amulet of Power. This is a nice. fiction. Somebody gave me that as a gift. Look, Animal Speak. Look at that, this one. It's a book on Native American shamanism. The Indian, the White Cloud. Why a White Cloud? That guy. BDSM 101. What's that? That's when I tie you up, bitch, put something in your mouth, gag you, and spank you like you wanted to be spanked your whole fucking life. That one. Open secret, what's that? You decode this book and you're God. And then come teach me how to do it because I still don't know. <laughs> Creative Mind, what's that? One of the first self-help books you'll ever find. Laws of the Jungle, what's that? It's just dope. That's all I can tell you. Just dope. Yeah, <laughs> nonviolent communication. <laughs> yeah, I read communication books. A Course in Miracles. Why? Because it's a fucking miracle having five fucking girlfriends. So I need a course in it. Behind the mind. Why? Because I've tried being in front of it. I've tried being in it. Behind it works a lot better. NLP and persuasive language. Instant social influence. You see how cool this book looks? You all think that if you have this book, what's up, Jess? <laughs> Jess says, shh, Linda. <laughs> 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 Look, this book, you see? Look at this. this is such good marketing. It's one of the worst books I've ever read in my life. This is one of the most pathetic books. You want to see how pathetic this fucking book is? Watch. I'm just going to... Here we go. Here's what it says. Take, for example, a sales page for a weather-resistant jacket on Macy's website. For this particular item, Macy's aim is to improve the sales of this jacket by focusing on the jacket's number one benefit, its weather-resistant resistant feature. Macy's wants its customers to believe that this jacket is the finest weather-resistant jacket you can find. To do so, they use repetitive priming. That's the word you have to read earlier. On their product page, the words windbreaker and weather-resistant appear a number of times in the product's description as a way to emphasize the jacket's key features and to prime these words in the customer's subconscious. The customer Intending to buy a weather-resistant jacket. Oh, the customer remembers these words and recalls the jacket when intending to buy a weather-resistant jacket. If you start to take note of this technique, you will start to notice in marketing, advertising, blah, blah, blah. I understand. That sounds really cool to you, okay? But I learned that when I was about seven years old, I think, okay? When I kept telling my mom, no, I want to do that. 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 I want I repeated it, and then she got it. And then finally, The Art of War, a very beautiful book, but it's not just The Art of War. It's about five books in one. It's the Art of War, the Tao Te King, Confucius Analects, the Great Learning, the Doctrine of the Mean, and the Works of Mencius. Okay, now look, somebody, when you guys ask me what book do I recommend, that's just for like the last, uh, maybe five weeks. Which one should I recommend to you? Because if you miss one of them, you miss what I know. Let's just say you read all the, all the mind shit in here. Do you know anything about spirit animals and shamanism because i've been studying that since i was 14 years old and i'm 42 42 and 14 was the first book i picked up on that shit. but what if you're good at that what if you're like a magician i have magician friends very very good okay very good what do you know about the mind what do you know about the mind because i'll come over there and i'll mind bend your shit. you see so to get here what you need to do is study my stuff because then i've taken all of this and i put my shit together and i demonstrate my life none of these books by itself would ever get you the results i've given none but having a certain level of communication and understanding of the spiritual laws 
how your mind works and language put together. Those were the last four books I just picked up in my head, right? All those four put together and done at a high skill level. Come and get it, motherfuckers. Let me show you what I can do. There's no stopping the shit. Okay, let's continue forward, not backwards. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's you right now. That's me? That's really? You earlier. Earlier, yeah. <laughs> That's you all the time. Really? Yep. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, now let me pause here and take any questions from the audience. Please type it if you have it. I'll take a question and then I'll continue and then we end at 11. Sure. Just type your question if you have some, on anything. You don't have to be about this. I've got questions, I get answers. I have a question, Raj. Yes, what is it? I feel like my game is currently uh, very highly dependent on my state and feeling good. Yeah. Will this eventually go away with time and practice? Like, what's the mode of operation when you're not feeling it? Good question. Tony Robbins, shout out to Tony Robbins, says that it's all about your state, right? State changes is his thing. Like, he teaches salespeople to get in state before they sell. He teaches athletes to get in state before they do athletic moves. So that's like a major thing. Now, the question is, do we get so good at changing our state so that our states are available to us? That's one solution. And then you go, well, I just don't really feel like it. Yeah, okay, well, then you got to practice changing your state. That's the, that's the practice of it, right? Someone better at doing that is better at changing their state versus somebody else changing their state. But it takes practice. So one is to just change your state, to say, like, I'm not in, in the right state of mind. Uh, and so my social skills were suffering a little bit. Is, is there a way to fix it? Yes. You see, your social skills are connected to your state of mind. And your state of mind is connected to your emotion. The whole thing is a system. So there's no cheat in this thing. That's what makes it so powerful. And that's why I'm so addicted to this thing. Because in order to get so good at it, you literally have to be clean on every fucking point on this thing. At every point you clean up, your game picks up on another level when you do it like this, okay? So uh, I would say two things. One, keep practicing changing your state. Two, if you feel like, man, I'm just not in the right state to, to do whatever it is you're doing, then ask yourself this question. This is our practice here. You, you swerve on that pitch. So you go like this. You go, okay, what am I in state for in this environment? Like, oh, I, you know what? I, I'm in the mood to chill for a minute. Okay, uh, now I'm going to explore chilling in this environment where I normally I'm going around talking to people. I don't feel like going around talking to people, but I'm, I feel good. I just, I'm going to explore chilling and seeing what it's like. Now you start chilling and then maybe someone comes up and is like, are you okay? Is everything all right? How come you're not dancing? How come you're not partying? And you start realizing, oh, okay, I get it. This goes in disharmony with the environment if I do this. So now you have two choices. You get up and dance or you figure out, okay, how can I still chill out but not communicate to others that I'm not in harmony in this environment with them? Because people will just reject to that no matter what. And so then now that becomes a practice where maybe you, uh, you know, you grab your drink, you sit down or whatever it is, you smile more, you get up, you walk around, maybe you figure it out. That's the best the life practice. Okay. Okay. Next. All right. Hector Rosales. Do you finish a book before reading another? No, 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 no. Or do you read? I read on and on and on. I have some books that I've never finished. I, tried, I, I would try to finish books, but what I realized it did was there would be a new urge inside of me to learn something very important because life would give me certain things. And I would tell myself, okay, I'll, I'll study that when I'm done with this, but that's improper. What's proper is I'm going through life, something happens, let's say my dog needs dog training. I shouldn't say, well, I'm reading a book on cats. When I'm done, no, my dog needs dog training now. So I got to grab a book, put that one aside and read what needs to be handled. Once it's handled, my interest will wane, it'll go away, and I'll go into the next book. But the subject book, the book remains. There are books, like I said, there's one book here that I've read so many times. The book, I have copies of them, more than one. One of the copies is moldy because it has water in it. It's just fucking, it's gross. Yeah, it's still here. It's still here. It is. It's the few of the pages that have mold in them. 
and I will not willing to rip the pages off. Why? I can never finish this book, and I've read it so many times, but at a certain point in around the middle, around the same area of this book, I have such an enormous realization about life that I cannot keep reading it. I just put it aside. And then I have a, and then I live life, and then things happen, like months later, I realize something, I'm like, oh my God, I remember the book, I pick it up, and instead of going to the middle where I left off, I always, and that's why I've read it so many times, I always go back to the very beginning, and I start at the beginning, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm mind blown. This thing keeps happening. Hopefully I'll get through the book one day. Okay. So no, I don't, I don't wait, but I used to do that. I felt like when I did that, I did it more for other people. Right? More like so that people don't have a judgment. Like, oh, you don't read that boy. You don't read all that. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I'm trying to live my life and get better at life, okay? So I'm going to use whatever information I have when I have it. I don't need to, like, uh, comply to your fucking rule of I should finish a book before I go to another book. This ain't school, man. This is my life. All right? This isn't college. I'm not getting a grade in high school. It's my life. I'll stop reading it when it's not interesting. But I'll be reading every day. That's for sure. I'll be reading every day, just maybe not that book. I'll visit the book again when I'm interested in it again. But yes, my, I will have knowledge of it. Just like I try to brush my teeth every day. I'm just kidding, I do. Okay, next. I'm going to do two more and then a little light lecture ending and we're done, okay? All right. DJ Andre, should my three girlfriends have have met each other yeah if you, you got it like that not if you don't not if they meet each other and then it's a disaster but then you need to really study my stuff because i don't need i don't need that's not a question here that's like okay so okay 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 ready let me rephrase the question should i start telling my three girlfriends the truth about my my love life and sex life i thought you said your girlfriends are they your girlfriends? Yeah, well, they don't know about what's going on. Well, your relationship can't be that strong yet. Arash, how slow does one go when they are being seductive? And how long does it usually take to seduce the other person? And when should you stop? If they aren't allowing you to properly seduce, you should stop when they say stop. <laughs> okay, no is no, all right? How slow? Each person has a different speed. Okay. But once you find that person's speed, the speed you go is you go at their speed. And then right when you're at their speed and they get comfortable, you slow down a little bit more. A little bit. And she'll start to, because she's very comfortable, right? You're going her speed, everything's. And then she looks and you're back there. She goes, hey, aren't you catching up? And you say, I'm not comfortable there yet. And she goes, wait, what? You, that's, you can't say that. What do you mean not comfortable? That's my fucking, that's my role. No, 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 no. I'm not comfortable there yet. Why? I don't know. So you slow down a little bit, but, but the ultimate rule is when it's available to you, what it is that you seek, take it. That means if she's ready to kiss you, should you kiss her or not? Yes. Okay? If you want to, that, that is. You should not kiss her because you're trying to seduce her when she wants to kiss you. Wrong. That's what people fuck up. They're like, well, no, I tried to slow it down more. Not for that. Not that. Okay? Not that. All right. Let's see if there's any more. What a bold move for a man to make, to kiss a woman, huh? That he doesn't know. I was just thinking about that, huh? Let's have a little bit more respect for us. Look at that. You're about to, you don't even know if your breath smells bad or if hers smells bad. You don't even know where those lips have been. You don't even know if she'll slap you. I mean, you're a stranger. She's going to allow lips on her lips. Where's her daddy? <laughs> She's about to get a new one. All right, Natalie, what are your thoughts on the Fibonacci rhythm? My thoughts on it are awesome. I think it's cool. I'm currently in training my heart 
to the Vitruvian rhythm through tapping. Okay, tell me how it goes. I know a little bit about tapping. I don't know about that word Vitruvian rhythm. Okay, next, Mother Matter. Can you explain cognitive dissonance? <laughs> no, I can't, but I know someone who can. Go look up my Babel Physics Project. He's got the best definition for that, okay? So he's the man for that. Terrence, would you be willing to progressively teach a woman to understand that being with multiple women is the ideal for you? Or would you not accept her into your life if she doesn't like the idea initially? She has to be open to the idea. She can't be closed 100%. Well, I mean, look, she would be closed, but that's when you're friends. Let her be friends with you. Don't make her girlfriend. Look, I have friends that are girls. They're not my girlfriend. I have friend girls, got it? I sleep with some of them. You get that? So, but why are they friends? They cannot qualify to be girlfriends. <laughs> They're lacking, dude. Okay? Oh, but you would sleep with them? They're not lacking in that fucking department. Even a fucking goat can fuck. They're lacking in the department where I would want them as my girlfriend, but they're good friends. A girlfriend is like a best friend. There's a big difference, okay? So if you're gonna be my best friend, then you're not gonna have a fucking problem with my life and talk stupid about it. Well, you could be my friend, acquaintance, we we'll go get drinks, do whatever, talk, and I'll use you to get other girls or whatever. So I wouldn't get with her, then teach her, because to get with her at an, at, at an initial agreement that, I'm not okay with you being with other women. Okay, but let's get together and hopefully you'll be okay. No, we agreed in the beginning. I'm not okay with you doing that. So she wins that spiritual war. So I got to go, no, 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 no. And she goes, well, I'm not okay with it. I said, listen, okay, when you're, she goes, well, what if I'm never okay with it? I go, are you willing to change? And are you, do you know, do you get that this is the condition? That all men, that they're going to, do you get that? Yes or no? Good. Do you get that if I'm not the guy you're going to get with, whichever guy you're going to, you're going to, your destiny will be that he's going to either cheat on you or he's going to leave you. Or it's just, that's the way it is. Do you get that? And she admits all that. She has to say, great. So I know all that shit too. Now, if you're saying that it's difficult for you to, to process it or understand it, that's fine. As long as you say, yes, you know, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to be with other women and you're going to keep working through it. But if you think I'm not going to be with them because you haven't worked through it, well, that's not going to happen. Why? Because she's never going to work through it. You're, you're stuck on her ability to be okay with it. Nah. Every woman is okay with it. I keep proving it. Give me a game show. They're okay with it. They're liars. Okay, next. All right, what do we got? All right, Taryn says, I have someone that is not willing to understand that I have multiple girls. However, she's a lot more submissive and valuable than the other women. So I feel like I should give her some time to understand. Yes, as a friend, let the submissive, beautiful girl be all around you and watch you be with different women. And she still is having sex with you. She's still being with you. And she's like, well, you're, like, you're not my girlfriend. That's why we're not together. I love you as a friend. You're beautiful, this and that, but I can't commit to you. Why? Because you refuse to see the truth. This is not about Terrence. This is about go talk to God. Okay, please. Now, look, I was having a discussion with a girl about this. I said, look, here's the thing. Look, you were just taught wrong. I'll give you an example. If you were taught your whole life that cats, when they, no, 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 that dogs, when they shit, they go inside a litter box. Let's say everybody told you this growing up. But not one dog ever willingly took a shit in the litter box. And every time they did it, they looked awkward and weird. And they seemed to like to want to sniff the trees and shit. <laughs> and every single dog who had been shitting in a litter box at some point was proven. Everyone, your own dad, your own uncle, your own grandpa was proven that he would have the fucking desire and imagine and visualize and run away to another land like Vegas and finally piss and shit outside the fucking litter box. If every single dog was like that, but you were told that that's what dogs do, 
it would have to take somebody who can look and go, wait a second, has anybody else observed that every single dog is uncomfortable in litter box and every one of them goes and does shits everywhere else and their heroes are other dogs that don't shit in litter boxes? Wait a second, has anybody observed this thing? Okay, by observation, it's clear that men by nature, by God, by religion, by evolution, by every goddamn standard, except that little girl who's insecure. By every other standard, including hers, by the way. Men are gonna be with more than one woman, and that's the end of it, planet Earth. Take that shit, shove it up your dried ass vaginas. I'm sick and tired of hearing this shit. You are wrong, and that's the end of it. Welcome to a new fucking age. I've been saying this for a long time. Look, men are designed by every single science that you could create except an idea that one person puts into another person's idea that it's wrong. But by every other standard that you could measure, every single male homo sapiens is designed, designed. You know what that means? It's the design of this jar to hold water not to be a hammer, not to be a helmet, but to hold water. That's what it does best, okay? Men are designed to be with multiple women. I am proof that it's not only multiple women, it's the most beautiful and intelligent women that understand this shit. I'll keep doing it. I'll keep having multiple girlfriends. That is the way it goes. And ain't nobody could say otherwise. Nobody could stop me. It's not like they haven't been trying. They tried and they failed. What you're seeing is one who beats all his enemies in this game and stands here with no opposition. Why? Not that they weren't there. I killed every one of them in the game. In the game, I murdered all of them, and I stood the only one standing in the end. And I'll still stand to the end. I will continue to get the most beautiful woman on the planet to not only fall in love with me, but to give me everything that I want again and again and again, regardless of my age, because of the way I look, and how much money I make. Because I understand her psychology, and I understand communication, and I'm goddamn good at this shit. Fuck that. I am C Nation. Be the best fuck the rest.